The Whim, Canto Eleven, Eternal and Imperishable. And old senators in their bathing suits, half drowning on the shore, hold to the sun of it still while the new emperor's boots trip scandals trying to count dead the one or ever-present index of the whole whose forever leaving itself undone is the simple reason any thief stole. Yes, am I here standing in the vortex, thinking mountains misty as a lone mole, apostrophizing the image's X, or absolute transparency nigh touched by the forgotten original sex of loving dissolution madly clutched by a single couple of pure no-ones. So be it to be a whatever such, the prayed to of too many prayers, and tons of so nearly insincere sighs and tears, to be a kind of human, someone's, shuffling over the bridge, labors peers in protest with the way things simply are, this existence at which everyone jeers. Poor ultimate, which human in its car accelerates as if to never see. Poor lover of lovers and star of stars whose twilight pierces as too fast to be in this so-called world whose blind creator is nobody except little old me. Of that volume, Bound by Love, an author. Take, reader, one breath intelligent, please, and tell of the dream where, like a martyr, you lay all smiles on the beach, at ease in sweet torture of letting the salt air receive in glory the wounds and disease everyone worries about, as if care, forgetting what the heart said deep inside. I know you know I know what it's like there, to leap in somersault sublime, not hide anymore the crime of exactly who one happens to somehow be, born or died, or whatever punctuation, true or false language wants to put on this act of throwing the thrower ancient anew. That which the poem points to is no fact or thing going by the name of being, nothing at all to which me, we may react. So now what to do, friend, but see seeing again for the first time, listening for the taste of what touches the scent, freeing who inhales it from the rhythm of time. <laughs>